want to I want to start with this to tell you about the power of your word. The power of your word is the same power that Jesus had speaking a word. Now, in the scripture it tells it that the that the mouth speaks under direction of the mind. Then it also tells it's the mind teaches the mouth to speak. That's in Proverbs. Then another scripture tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. All right, so in other words, for me to speak this language of English, uh, I had to learn English in my mind and then speak it out. But what's coming out of your heart, what's coming out of the innermost part of you is a river of living water. So we've talked about sowing and reaping and, and sowing with a purpose. Now, I understand this from heaven, and for all these years I've been trying to get people to really grab it. It has to do with everything Jesus said. If you would speak with a purpose and doubt not, whatever you say, you can have. Now, we've heard that, and you've heard it before, and you're hearing it right now, but I want you to be one with that word so that you can begin to speak words specifically with purpose knowing that it's coming out of your very nature as a son of God. The power of life comes out of these words. It can be in Romanian, it can be in Indian, uh, Hindi, uh, Portuguese, English. It's, it's not about the language of the word. It's about the life of the word. All right, so here's what happened. I was, uh, I was in New York City, and I was uh, staying with some people there. And it was quite an interesting time. It was wintertime, miserable weather, really bad. And uh, I've been down on the streets uh, preaching down on Wall Street. It's quite an amazing time. Those people are walking in such darkness, it was unbelievable. And here's a little light, you know, out there shining my little light of mine. You know, just out there shining his light, you know. And it's so dark, they could hardly, you know, they'd look at the light and they didn't even know what it was. You know, that's how dark it is. All right, so anyway, we got back to the house. And it turns out there was one of the sisters in the house. And she'd been in bed for about four days. And I didn't know it. And uh, I said, what, what's wrong with her? Well, she's got pneumonia. And so the doctor sent her home and bed rest and whatever they do with, you know, ministering to ammonia. And, of course, everybody had come, uh, the other believers and the elders of that local church that they came prayed for. Well, <laughs> I'm just sitting there having dinner, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says to me, your words have power. Yeah, okay, I agree. Okay, so go tell her. Check it out. Go tell her to run around the block five times, and she'll be healed. I went in, sat down, started talking with her. And I said, you get up and walk. Then you start running around the block. You run around it five times, and you'll be healed. <laughs> and I let it go. Well, she got up immediately before anybody even knew she was up. And she's out, running around. Five, you know, dying of pneumonia. <laughs> and she goes running around block five times. Well, where is she? Where she's not here? And I, you know, they start, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Well, Michael told her to go run around the block. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm, ooh, boy. Uh, okay, so she came back totally exhausted. Oh, man, but I feel so much better. I feel so much better. said, so, boy, about the third time around, I didn't know if I was going to make it. But I just kept going. I just kept going. And then so, I said, mean, I think I'm just going to rest for a while. She fell asleep. Next morning, gets up, totally healed. But, boy, did I catch it. Boy, I got in big trouble with those people telling this lady with pneumonia to get up and run around in the rain and the cold <laughs> God wants to do something through you. But you have to believe your words. That's why we're working on 
on, on what is called Babylon. Babylon is a system of the world where everybody speaks in confusion. And they don't believe what they say. Now the parents, they want to believe that when they tell that child to do something, that that's going to happen. But then it doesn't happen, and the parent will make an excuse for the child. Oh, well, okay. okay. But that's not the way Jesus is. When he purposes something and he speaks it, it will happen. It may not happen right then. And we have that record in the Bible where he didn't heal everybody instantaneously. It says after an hour this happened. And there's no telling how many of those healings happened uh, that weren't instantaneous. No telling. We got some, you know, a few of them that are just real faith builders about how he did this to the leper and he did this to this other person and healed the blind eyes. But, I mean, it, it talks about him healing gun, gazundas, uh, lots of people. But the thing was, he made a statement now. In this one situation, okay, he made a statement. says, what is it easier to say? Your sins be forgiven? Or stand up and walk. Very interesting. So see, it's not about the words of your English. It's about the will of your soul to give life. He says, what's easier to say? But to show you that the Son of Man has authority on the earth, stand up and walk and keep walking. That's you. Why I say it's you? Because, see, that same Son of Man is in you. He sent, and He lives in you by the Holy Spirit that came into you. The Holy Spirit is God, in case uh, some of those uh, uh, Pharisees out there, if you're listening, the Holy Spirit is God. Ah. He's one with the Son. And His purpose to come into us is to reveal the Son. All right, now... The revealing of the Son comes to us as we begin to see ourselves according to the simplicity of the Word, what it is to be born again. But then we see that in our soul there's, there's so much stuff. So much stuff of the world, so much stuff of the old person that we used to be, so much stuff. But faith keeps pushing us on to lay hold of the promise, the word that he's spoken to us that we know, we, we know it. You know that if your heart stops beating and you leave that body, you know that you're free from everything here. You know it. You know that that body, that little vessel that you're walking around is very, very, very frail and weak and, and, and short-lived, short time. Now, most people around the world today are very dull of hearing. They know every story in the Bible. They're, they're dull of hearing because they never learn to listen for life. Somebody asked us one time, said, well, well how, do you keep the, how do you keep the false prophets from coming into your service? And how do you keep people? That are, because, see, the people in the fellowship, if you're a son of God, you learn to feed on life. And even a person's quoting scripture, you can tell if it's alive or it's old, dead religious scripture. It could be your identity as a son. And you know, oh, there's no life in what that guy's saying. The word is true, but it's not coming life out of him. You discern the life beyond your understanding. Ah, lean not to your own understanding. Then comes this place where faith lifts us to the place to where we are in Christ, in heaven. It says, says we, we are dead and our life is hid in Christ and we're seated in Christ. And guess where he is? He's at the right hand of the Father. So some of you tonight, as you were into that song the spirit of faith lifted you up to look look to your left because there he is the father himself is right there and you're seeing through the eyes of the head and who's the head jesus 
You're seeing through his eyes. You're seeing the Father. The Father's speaking to him, and he's speaking to the Father. And you're in oneness with the Lord. That's the experience I was hoping you'd get. Some of you got it. Some of you were just still singing it. So remember, we're only dealing with life. Religious stuff, dead, dead, you know. Every word of God is profitable. Okay? To build you up and to help you, to help you grow, if you're taking the life of it. If you get the life of it, then faith is alive and it's profitable to you. As it's written that, that the Jews had all of the promises, same promises you got, except, well, even eternal life came. How about the promise of the, what the, the all those guys got snake bit and they were all dying and, and the guy goes and makes a, makes a stake, the snake puts it on a pole, right? And all they had to do was believe. Believe what? That if they looked at that, they'd be healed. If they looked at it and didn't believe, they wouldn't get healed. So we're listening with the ears of faith that that word we're hearing is alive. If it's coming to you and it's not life, you discern it right away. I've had many people throughout the time I'd listen to them and they would, they would preach the same scriptures in English and in different languages. They'd preach the same scriptures, but there was no life in it because they didn't have it. That scripture wasn't alive in them. So now the life that you're receiving, every time you come and you listen to us, every time you are talking to someone else, the faith is that you are speaking that life. And, I, and it's, it's wonderful. But now let me show you some scriptures here. All right, you, got, you waking back there, Essie? Hello. Wave. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 46. Look at this. Remember the former things of old. Wait a minute. Is that the first one? No, here's the first one. The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him, in them, those that hope in his mercy. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually that the Lord be magnified. He has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Now, this body that you've got is the servant of the Lord. It's a servant. It's got to be totally changed to come into sonship. You and your soul, well, that's a son growing, developing. You in the spirit, one with the Lord, you're already there. Spirit, soul, body. Now, our Father does nothing except according to the good pleasure of His will. It is His good pleasure to send Jesus as the Word of God sent Him to the earth. It was His good pleasure to have Him die, suffer, and rise up again for us. It was his, the Father's good pleasure. Look at this Old Testament. This Old Testament promise. He takes pleasure in them that fear him. As a son, you come into an awareness that the spirit of the fear of the Lord is a wonderful, wonderful servant in the kingdom of God. You're a son. All of the kingdom of God wants to serve you. But as a son, you're like Jesus. You are Lord of all, and you're servant of all. But this is different than that concept of servant that you have in the English language or any other earthly language. A servant is a, is a lower creature. Now, this is God's way. He is servant of all, and he's drawn us into him. Look at this. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Now I read that scripture and I say, man, I've got that. Am I meek? Well, I don't know. I was meek enough to receive salvation. See, the, the prideful, they don't receive. What is, what is that humility, that true humility? It's the ability to receive from God. Pride doesn't receive from God. It sends back and says, oh, yeah, I know that. 
Oh, you know, yeah, I know that. No. Every day is full of new life, abundance of life. So I listen, and I, I, hear, I hear the word of God speaking through the donkey. You know that Old Testament story? Maybe you ever look it up. There was a donkey, and God spoke through that donkey's mouth to the prophet. Well, I hear the Lord speaking through sometimes a radio, sometimes a TV program, a song, a sign going down the road. <laughs> you know, you know. His voice is everywhere for me because I'm willing to receive it. Now, because of the life that you have, and because you have clear discernment, even as a youngest, as young as you could think you are, oh, I'm just so new and all this, you could be the young, you still have that discernment of life because you've come into that life. You know, it says about the end time that, that if it were possible that the devil, the antichrist, the world would deceive even the very elect if it were possible. But it's not possible for you. Oh, maybe you get tripped up on something. Maybe your flesh snares you. Maybe some doctrine, some deal out in the world uh, lays hold of you for a while. But you won't be deceived because, see, you have life, and so you discern life. Many, many that we talk to go to churches and other places, and they go there because of their family. They go there because of all kinds of reasons. And what do you get out of it? Uh, nothing. And that's okay. That's where they're supposed to be or God would move them out. This I can tell you, you can trust your Father with every soul that comes into the kingdom. Everyone that gets saved, you can trust Him that they could be in, 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 in some totally non-spirit-filled, totally religious realm, totally everything. All they do is come and they, and they look at Jesus on the cross. Hallelujah. That's okay. That's where God's got them. And you can just love them right there and edify them. Yeah, he died for you. Oh, I love him. So. He died for you. But you're a son. You've gone way past that. You've already received the pleasure of the Lord. You've received that salvation. You, know, you wake up as a son, you know you're saved. And I'll remind you again, if that little harder, you stop speeding, you're out of here. And you're, not, you're already saved. What are you doing here? Ah. Allowing the Holy Spirit to change that soul to be like Jesus. Change it. And you all know what I'm talking about. You all got these ideas in your mind, thoughts in your mind, emotions, and then doing the will. So we start with a very simple exercise of will that Jesus tells us. Whatever you say out of your mouth, you're, you're speaking it with a purpose, don't doubt you can have what you say. But look at all of the thoughts that come to you. All the thoughts of doubt. Okay? Don't doubt. Believe your words. Believe your words. And then others will believe your words. And they'll get up and they'll run around the block five times and be healed. Now, you might get some persecution from that. Because I did. As a matter of fact, they kicked me out. Who do you think you are telling this lady she was sick? And blah, 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 and you told her to go to the and she could have died. And blah, blah, blah. I said, she didn't. It wouldn't. All right, I'll see you. Goodbye. <laughs> are you following me? Okay. Now, you can only do this as the Lord, you know, gives you the direction to do it. But what is so amazing about you is that you don't have any fear to disobey God. Fear. He takes pleasure in them that fear Him. Only do I fear my Father. Not the devil, not you, not some religious leader. Only Him. The fear of the Lord is clean and pure. Oh, wonderful. With that, he can speak to you, you can do something, and you'll do it, and you'll see the power. Here we go. Shout for joy, be glad, that favor my righteous cause. What is that cause? What do you think? Salvation. Amen. 
favor in it. You know somebody that's not safe? Many of us in, in our communities around the world, we don't even know anybody that's not saved. <laughs> you know, they believe. Many of you come out of uh, regular old churches, and, and yet I tell you, 99% of those people actually believe Jesus died on the cross for them and that they're going to be saved one day. They can only come into knowing that they're saved when they come into sonship. If they don't come into sonship, they're in hope. They're trying to do everything they can to please God. But look at what we're talking about. It is God's good pleasure. Prosperity of the servant. Prosper in your body. That's the servant. He wants to prosper it. Prosper it in health. Prosper it in financing. He wants to prosper it. Why does he want this to happen? Because he loves us. He loves us. How is it going to happen? Comes the very foundation of faith. Faith. Living faith in God's promises, his word. And some, all of us are in struggle in some way of having faith for something. And it's not yet here, now, here, and now. It's not, but you're still believing for it. You're still believing for it. And you hold on to it. Don't let go. Don't let go. In other words, the whole story of Jacob is all about the fact that he was not going to let go of God until he got a blessing. Even when God crippled him, he did not let go. Why? God wants to see. Do you really want what he asked for you? It wasn't about getting the blessing. It was about, does he re do you really want what he has for you? Well, you know, one thing about God is that he is the wisest father that ever existed, and he knows one thing about his children. If they don't earn it in some way, salvation is a free gift, but faith is a, is a work. If you, don't work, if you don't earn it in some way, you don't regard it. I regard the faith that he's worked in me for all of these years. I regard that. that that's, I possess that. That belongs to me in Christ. Produced it. And so that's why he rejoice. You got a trial going on? Praise God. Oh, 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 oh yes. Let's get, give me another one, Lord. Oh, we don't want the trials. Huh? You must have done something wrong. You must have been evil. What did you sin? What did you do? <laughs> Nothing. It's because you got something that you're believing in inside. Now, what happens? You got, it, you got one of your kids, and they go out for athletics. They go out for, you know, some kind of sport. Every kid that goes out this sport, every single one of them has the opportunity to quit as soon as it gets tough. Especially these days. Back when I was growing up, if you weren't tough going out there, you didn't even go out there to start with. Now, you, everybody go out there, okay, yeah, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, okay, it's all right. You're still a winner. No, they're not a winner. <laughs> I don't know about other countries, but this is the way America is. And it's not the truth. Okay? Winners overcome. So whatever areas that you're believing in, maybe they're right in front of you. Maybe they have to do with your emotions. They could be due with money. They could be doing with, with finances. They could be with anything. Your father is pleased for you to hold on to that promise. Keep going. Don't stop. So we remember the former things of old, and this is the word. This is such an eternal word. For I am God, he says, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. He's telling you, remember everything you've read in the Bible about all those stories. Remember about Genesis. And he told Noah, okay, I want you to go build this giant boat because I'm going to flood the whole earth. Well, Noah said, what's a boat? All the people around him, what is an ark? What's a boat? They didn't have rain back then. The earth was watered with a mist. 
And then all of a sudden, the deluge of water came down and flooded the entire planet. Anybody wants to, wants to know what happened to the dinosaurs, that's what happened to them. They didn't get on the ark. Very simple. Okay. <laughs> there is none like me. Now he's talking to the prophet, and through the prophet he's talking to the people. But you can't look at that scripture today. You, son, can't look at that scripture without saying, wait a minute, Father, I'm like you. Hello? You have to say that. If you know that you're a son, you have to say that. I don't know what it's like to be like you, Father, but you birthed me. You say I'm your son. You say I'm in the likeness of Jesus. Then I believe it. Okay? His word. I told you about my word to speak into that girl running around. Well, <laughs> She had everything in the world telling her, no, no, don't, you'll die. But all she could hear was the life of that word. And it took the exercise of that faith. Her faith in that word, and she got completely healed of that pneumonia. You're in the same boat. You're in the same way. God's speaking to you. You've got faith in a certain area. He's speaking to you about that, and you're standing in it. And you're holding on to him. Even if he breaks your leg, <laughs> as he did with Jacob, you don't let go of him. I'm not letting go of you until you bless me, he said to God. Now, I know that this seems to be tough. But what God wants to do with you is to transform you into the very image of Jesus. And if you look at the, what was tough for Jesus, what we go through is nothing. Nothing. Okay. Believing in his oneness with you. That he is the woman, the man, the father, the mother, the kid. It's him. That life you're walking in. When you get up in the morning, you want that Cocoa Puff cereal. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> that's, that's Jesus in me. How much is me? How much is Jesus? Who cares? Everything about you is totally sanctified unto him by his blood. Declaring the end from the beginning... From the ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. His pleasure is that his word multiplies. The life of his word multiplies. His good pleasure is that his word, who is his word? Jesus, multiplies in you increases in you, takes you from faith to faith, glory to glory, ever being transformed into the image of the Lord. Are we ever going to be in the fullness of Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. Because he's continually ever. We don't know how that's going to work. But it says we can grow up under the fullness of the measure of Christ. Look at that. He says, from the end, I, I declare the end from the beginning. What's the promise telling you? It's telling you healed. It's telling you health. It's telling you prosperity. And he declares that from the beginning. That's what the seed is. It's alive. Everything that we go through every day, oh, it's so much death. That's why it's continually giving you encouragement from the Word. Whatever you find yourself, do, do with all your heart unto the Lord. Do what? Drive a car. Lord, it's you. You're driving the car. Working. Lord, this is you. Oh, man. Okay. Now, it's okay for you to you go down and just me, and you don't even think about the Lord. But commit it. Commit yourself to it. Lord, everything we do today, we do it together. Lord, whatever is going to happen in the work today, it's, it's you and I. 
He wants that oneness with you. He wants you to grow in that oneness with him. Fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the whole kingdom. But he's the best father ever. He's not going to give you authority and power and, and, and abilities until you're ready to be responsible with them. I'm not going to put my, my kid who's got a little wagon, he pulls it around the street. I'm not going to put him on a skateboard. Not yet, not till he learns a little more about the fact that that skateboard, he'll fall off. I'm not going to give him a, a car, you know. In other words, he trains us to be sons. We don't know how. We look to Jesus. We see the scriptures. We see what he did. We see how he did it. Do you see how he did those things? He did them from his own nature. He has eternal life. The nature out of him is the very power that he willed it out. Put words with it. That's the same way you are. That's why in your mind, you have to believe without doubting. If what you say, that's what you can have. And he wants to give us this kingdom. And I tell you what, it's worth it all. Every one of those prophets that had a vision of the kingdom, every one of those guys from, from the resurrection of Jesus up until today that had visions and Revelations of heaven, let me tell you what, they were willing to die. They get sawn in half, they got their heads cut off, they were boiled in oil. They're willing to totally die knowing <laughs> it's greater to go on without fear. Fear? Sure. Flesh is full of fear. Full of fear. You go out here and you hit your arm up against something, you cut yourself, you know. You're going to have a reaction of fear because the flesh, that's what it does. But you've already surrendered that body. And he's faithful to keep you and to keep it. Ephesians 1.5. See, he predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. We were born of God. That's who we are in the spirit. He adopted our soul. Our soul wasn't born again. Our soul was full of religious, death, sin, flesh, the world. And he adopted us, gave us his name, and now he's changing us from the inside. Changing our souls. In your soul, you have identity. Your soul is full of identity. You can say, I know I'm a son. I know I'm seated with Christ. But you have little knowledge about that at all. But you believe it without a doubt. Why? Because he said so. And you know it. Okay, now in that soul, it's full of identity. I am smart. I am dumb. <laughs> I'm emotional. I'm, I'm withdrawn. All of these, I am, I am, I am, I am, is your soul. He's going to transform in it as he's given you the kingdom. The kingdom is serving your soul to expose everything. Now, how does he expose things? This is so cool. Do you, we know this, that the law, the law of Moses was given to the Jews to expose sin. You understand that? If you didn't read that in, uh, is it Hebrews? Or Romans? Or one, of, one of those two big, long books. <laughs> you question whether I know the Bible? I live it. <laughs> it's alive. Okay, so... All right, what did he say? He said, the law was given to expose sin, bringing us to where we can't fulfill the law. We've got to step over into faith, right? So the law exposed sin, okay? So as we're adopted, the living word that comes to us exposes the old man's identity, exposes the old way of thinking. It exposes, okay, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The, the, I like the fish, but I don't like the, I don't like the lamb. All of those things are all of the identity of the flesh in the soul. So your identity, you were adopted to be changed into a son. And that exposes 
How does he do it? Promises. It is by his exceeding great and precious promises you become a partaker of sonship in the soul. That's where everybody is. If you're on the planet today, you're listening to me, it's, it's soul down here. It's so it's it's every day walking by faith in some kind of promise. God, I can't do this. Give me strength, Lord, to do this job. Give me, give me, give me some, give me some help, Lord. Give me some peace, Lord. I call on the Lord for strength every day. Every single day. <laughs> because as a son, the identity came to me and it said. I can do nothing by myself. So I had to strip Michael of every bit of his personal identity of all the things that he did that he could do in the flesh into the place of I can do nothing of myself. And then over the years, I began to see him doing it. More and more and more. And I would see old Michael show up again. And then we'd psh, get out of here. You don't have any place. Back on the cross you belong. And just keep going. All right. Woo, boy. <laughs> Ephesians 1.9. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he proposed in himself. What is the mystery of his will? What? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery of his will is what he wants to do with you. The mystery of his will. God, is it your will? And he says, son, what do you want? I came into that this, oh, this last couple of weeks. I'm going, uh, I got to get another car soon because this, this one, this lease car is gone. And I'm trying to find out what, okay, I go get this counsel about this and, and get this idea about this car and, and how much it's going to cost and did it and all these different things. And I went around, I went to the dealer, I talked to people and I go, oh, what am I going to do? And then he said, well, what's God saying? Well, I go to God, you know what he says to me? Son, what do you want? <laughs> I go, Father, I don't want anything. I want you to tell me what to do. Son, you're old enough to make up your mind. Hello? Did you ever have your kid grow up to the place to where they were willing to submit to whatever you told them, and then all of a sudden, they would make up their own mind? If you had kids, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything according to the good pleasure that he proposed in himself in the Word. So we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So we have grace, whereby we are serving God, well-pleasing to Him. Grace rules over our soul. We're submitted. We're surrendered to the abundance of the wealth of grace. Grace is a ruling spirit in heaven. Grace is the one working with your soul to transform you into sonship. So all of the operation of your soul, all the working of your soul, all the going through the trials to where you're learning to be a son, it comes up to God like this, according to Ephesians 1. Praise to the glory of grace. That's you and I individually. Then in Christ... In the fullness of all that Jesus did, seated at the right hand of the Father, it says also in Ephesians 1. All of that work, all of the action of subduing everything unto himself, all of it is praise to the glory of God. You can go back and read it. Now the just shall live by faith, and if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This is where you get really tried. This is where you're pressed out of measure, as Paul the Apostle said, pressed out of measure, beaten up, cast down. No, can't see because there's so many weeds choking him on. This is the place where your soul says, I don't care. As King David said, even 
If he kills me, I'll still praise him. I'll still worship him. This is the place of the ultimate. Many of you have little trials of this, but this is the ultimate, that whatever you believe for, you're willing to die to achieve it. You'll never give up believing. You'll never give up believing. Because, see, everything that doesn't believe needs to go. Most people never get such a intense trial. And that's good. Because right? all of us are only tried according to our ability to withstand it. This is what he says. Some more than others in different things. And you, whatever trial you're in today, whatever circumstance is your mountain of lack in front of you, you can keep looking at that mountain all day long and nothing's going to happen. But when you begin to speak to that mountain and God begins to give you wisdom on how to go through that mountain and cast that mountain out of the way. In other words, he wants you to totally believe his word. But not just a little one word. Not like an immature kid. Okay. Seek wisdom. I know about the money realm. It's very interesting. I learned a long time ago. God is not going to send an angel down with a bag of gold just because you believe that God wants to prosper you. No, you got to get involved in the system. you got to work in the system. And then once you're there, God will cause you to have promotion and get you more and more and more prosperity. But if you don't get in the system and work, he can't do anything with you. In other words, whew, he's there and I'm here and he's trying to get me to meet him. He's trying to get me to believe that every bit of the effort and every bit of the work that I'm doing and everything that I'm walking in by faith he wants me to believe it's him because it is him. 